We are the Sangha with great virtues out of compassion for the sake of this assembly and all living beings. Please turn the wonderful Dharma wheel to teach and guide us how to end birth and death, leave suffering and attain bliss, and quickly realize non-birth. Phung thin dai duk tang thin Vi thu pha phoi kap nhak thi hiếp chung san Tình chiến yêu phạm nhau đau ngã mồm Như há liệu san thoát tư Lý khô đà hạc lạc Tất chứng vô sân How much of the blessed, noble, and perfectly enlightened one? Nam mô sa đàn tổ sư chế đô dễ ơ la hờ đi sàn miêu sàn phụ tổ chế Nam mô tạc đạc thà tu dạ đạc dạ a la ha đế tam miệu tham bồ đà tóa The unsurpassed, profound, subtle, and wonderful Dharma in a hundred thousand million aeons is difficult to encounter. Now that I'm able to see and hear, I will receive and maintain it. I vow to fathom the thus come one true and actual principles. Wu sheng 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 wei miao fa ba hi chen wan jie nan zao yu wo jin jie wen de shou chu yuan jie ru lai zhen shi yi O Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, Great Master Ching Liang, Great Master Shenhua, all good monks and nuns, and all good advisors and made of all. Chư Phật Phú Sa, Ching Liang Ta Sư, Sư Phú Sang Ren, Gơ Wei, Chư Cha Ren, Gơ Wei, Sang Chư Sư, made of all. Chư Phật Bồ Tát, Khấn Thưa, Thanh Lương Đại Sư, Hòa Thượng Tiên Hóa, Quý Thầy Cô và Quý Vị Thịnh Chư Thức Cả Nhị Đạo Phật. Ok. Thank you, everyone. Today is the 25th, I believe, of June 2023. We're here lecturing from uh, the uh, Dharma Treasury Temple at, uh, at uh, San Francisco. Um, we are uh, uh, doing the Chan Chi here, and we are lecturing on the first chapter of the Avatamsaka Sutra on slide 198. Thank you all for coming. Mm. All right, this is a section where uh, there is a verse that describes the understanding of these, some of these world rulers who are actually Mahasattvas uh, uh, about uh, the Dharma and the Buddhas and so forth. Um, you understand that a point are very important to make that I like to emphasize again, that's not emphasized enough when people explain this first chapter here, is the fact we're learning about world, world rulers. These are uh, actually the God kings, celestial kings, who are ruling over uh, the uh, lot of heavens. Uh, and of the world. So the world is, uh, is uh, 3,000, uh, 3,000, uh, 3,000, three, th three great thousand worlds. Um, so there's a lot of heavens. 
And these Mahasattvas, they are able, their jobs are to rule over uh, these uh, heavens uh, or these, um, these uh, portions of the world. And therefore, uh, their, their job is uh, very, very important. Uh, and how do they get there? And they get there because uh, they get elected to do this job because they have great wisdom. This is what happens. When you acquire wisdom in Mahayana, is in order that to benefit the world. The more wisdom you want to develop, to unfold, you more, the more you have to benefit others. That's why the mind and the body, the heart and the body is about, meaning that uh, we, uh, we want to help living beings. You know? And the more, the better. And therefore, uh, we never stop. We never stop helping living beings. We want to help more and more and more. Okay? And so, in, it has practical values because these world rulers, instead of retiring, get into uh, retirement because they are well off, they're very well off. They don't need any more money. They don't need any more donations. They don't need any more income. And yet, they're still ruling the, uh, ruling the world and because they take it very seriously, um, because they have the wisdom, because they're able to. That's why they must do it. All right? And so this is what, in a way, uh, this is what, in a smaller scale, this is what we're trying to do as well. We're trying to develop our wisdoms so that we can do more good. And we don't have the same power, the same kind of uh, all-encompassing wisdom as these world rulers, Mahasattvas, but uh, we're going to get there one day because this is the path we're embarking on. We're going to want to do more good. We want to cultivate, open our wisdom so that we can do more good with our lives. This is what American Mahayana is about. Right? And, and so, so to help others requires wisdom. And what he's doing here, what these, what these beings are doing here, and they're sharing their insights with us. So they're plan, helping us plant the seeds of Vajra wisdom, Praja wisdom. Okay? 198. He explains the inconceivable realm of the Buddhas, bringing all beings back to the ocean of liberation. So commentary. Uh, the state of the Buddha, the Buddha's state is truly inconceivable. There's no way in that you can explain it. There's no way that the smartest people in the world can comprehend. Okay, that's why it's, just, it's called inconceivable. There's no way we can imagine even. Uh, and so he says, mm, uh, you, you know, the state of the Buddha is way beyond our imagination, way beyond conception. Okay? Uh, and, um, and when he explains about the inconceivable states of the Buddhas, mm, it helps motivate living beings uh, to, uh, he says here, by explaining the state, inconceivable states of the Buddha, he makes them uh, uh, so it makes them all uh, all uh, attain the, uh, the return to the ocean of liberation. Okay. Return to the ocean of liberation refers to the fact that originally uh, all living beings uh, 
have this uh, uh, have this ocean of liberations, meaning we're liberated. Is we are we have no constraints, we have no restraints, we have no shackles. Nothing is holding us back. Okay, and we simply are returning to it. Buddhism is to help you go home, go back to the ocean of liberation. Okay meaning that is nothing can restrain you. You're totally free. Okay? And so it is so, uh, the ocean liberation is com as co in contrast to the uh, many obstructions we have. Okay? It's totally unobstructed. All right? And Tung uh, Wei, uh, Wei here, it refers to uh, together, it's not just all. Together uh, is uh, meaning that it has two connotations as groups, and, and uh, first of all, it's group. Tung it, means it, it's, it's, uh, it's a group. For example, here at, at DTT, uh, we are the group at DTT, where we are going back to the ocean of liberations. Each of us will attain the various types of liberations. Okay? So as a group, this is how we cultivate. We don't cultivate by ourselves. You cultivate by yourself, you sit behind the four walls and you meditate all day, that's called Hinayana style of practice. Here, we practice in great assembly. We work together. You cultivate together. Okay? And that's, so that's what is meant by groups, by great assembly, by assemblies, if you will. Okay? And also has a connotation that uh, it's just not just you, but all of us. Okay, meaning this includes everyone, including these, with these world rulers who are not Buddhists yet, uh, they also uh, are part of this group where they too will attain more liberations, more and more liberations. Okay, so there is a concept here when these people work, the celestial people work, celestial kings work, is to benefit themselves as well, to attain their own kinds of liberations. Right? Mm. 200. The thus come ones abides independently in the world like a reflection of light manifesting in many countries. 如来处事无所依,譬如光影现中国。Okay, 201. See, he says, the thus come ones. Uh, he resides uh, in a place where he's not relying upon anything. Okay, uh, meaning the Buddha uh, doesn't depend on anything, needs nothing at all. He doesn't need our offerings. He doesn't need our admiration. He doesn't need our belief in him. Buddhas need nothing whatsoever. He doesn't need a palace. He doesn't need a car. They need public transportation. It needs nothing whatsoever. Can you imagine a state where you need nothing whatsoever? Yourself. If you need anything at all, then you're not a Buddha yet. As simple as that. You see? We need things. Monks and nuns, we need uh, clothing. 
we need temples, we need food to eat, and so forth. Yeah. And while there's Buddhas, they don't need anything whatsoever. And what is he like? Uh, he is like a reflection uh, of light uh, manifesting in the various Buddha lands. Mm. So uh, what he is, what, whenever we see him, mm, is basically a reflection of him. Okay, so he, whatever he stays, is, uh, is a place we don't know, where we can't imagine a place where you can stay, where you don't need anything. Hmm? You know, here, we, 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 at the temple, when you cultivate here, and you need a place for you to take a shower, you need a place for you to eat, you need a place for you to sleep, right? Buddha doesn't need anything. Yeah. And, and what is he like? Uh, so if, if he doesn't need anything, whatever, whenever you see him, uh, it's basically a reflection of light. It's like a reflection of light in many, many countries. What does it mean? It means that, what about Shakyamuni Buddha? Is he real? Is Shakyamuni Buddha a reflection of light? Can you give me some of the, uh, uh, the intertemple view because I cannot see who's raising hands or who's not? Anyone has any idea? Is Shakyamuni Buddha, what about Shakyamuni Buddha? Is it a reflection of light? What are they talking about? And no one has any ideas. No? Way Mountain. Thank you, Master. I don't, I don't know what they're talking about, but the closest uh, idea that I could, I can think of is, um, I have been in the presence of cultivators uh, who emit light. So a reflection of light sounds kind of like that. Okay. Hmm. A reflection refers that it's not the real thing. Okay. Hmm. Uh, he's like a reflection of light. Light represents wisdom. Light is what we need to see our ways. My room, for example, is very dark. So when I get up, get up in the morning, I tend to turn on the light so that I don't fall asleep. Dark is sleep, okay? But you turn on the light, you can see clearer. You can see what you, you can see things. So light here refers to the light of wisdom. The light of wisdom, mm. why do we need the light of wisdom? The light of wisdom is the kind of light will help us, that help us see clearer. All right? Mm. And so the Buddha, what he does, he says, he senses light, 
to many, many Buddha lands. Guo here, countries here, actually means Buddha lands. Uh, and what for? Uh, it, it's in order to shed lights on the living beings' problems. Right? Because without the light, we will not uh, be able to understand, we will not be able to find a way out of our sufferings, our confusion. Can you see that as part of your contribution to the world is if you have wisdom, you can help shed lights on others. Because without the light, they will continue to do confusing things and increase their own suffering. And so that's why the analogy in Buddhism is that we uh, shed lights to help you solve your problems. That's the Buddha's contribution to the world, without which we will continue to suffer endlessly. We cannot find a way out of our own sufferings our own predicaments. So he has to shed light on us so that we can see more clearly the way or how to get out. Okay. Uh, what about reflection of light? Um, so what it is is that what the way he does it is that he sheds lights on you whatever, uh, whatever uh, you see of a Buddha is basically a reflection. Meaning that even Shakyamuni Buddha, okay, in the flesh, is basically but a reflection. It's not real. A reflection is not the real thing. A reflection is what you can see yourself. You see on a, on, on a body of water, on the wall, you see a reflection, okay? But you know it's not, it's not the real deal, okay? So including Shakyamuni Buddha is basically a reflection as well. He is not the entire Buddha. It's basically whatever you can see, whatever you deserve to see, whatever you have the blessings to be able to see. All right, so you see that there's totality of the thus come one here. Rulai, thus come one here. But since you cannot see him, it's not possible for you to see him. All he can do is send his reflection. Okay. Hmm. Next, 202. Dharmas ultimately do not come into being. King Supreme Views enters this passage. Okay, 203, the next verse says, Dharmas uh, ultimately, ultimately do not come into being. Mm. Actually, they didn't translate uh, the word, Chinese word, sing, nature. Uh, okay, fa uh, sing, ultimately. Uh, is not produced and arise. Okay, uh, so uh, so he says, mm, uh, all dharmas, their nature. I don't know how to translate this cleanly for, for in a form of a verse. But what it's saying in Chinese is that uh, the nature 
of all dharmas is ultimately without production, without arisal. Is there is there still an echo problem here on the on on the internet? Not today. So how come it, says, it sounds louder tonight and than the night before? But oh, you changed the the orientation. I see. Hmm. Okay, very good. Uh, so he says. The nature of the dharmas, meaning all dharmas, uh, ultimately are not produced and not arise. Have no arise or have no production. Mm. So what does it mean? Dharmas here refers to anything. Everything in this world is called a dharma. Dharma is what your mind can think of, can conceive of, okay? Whatever your mind conceives of, that thing is called a dharma, okay? And that's with how capital, when the dharma with the capital D means Buddha dharma, a short for Buddha dharma, all right? Mm. So here he says, fa sing, he says, all dharmas, uh, their nature uh, is open, ultimately, are not produced, not arised, has no production, has no arisal. Uh, what is production? Production is to be born, come into being. To be born is come into being. A boy is born. He comes into being, come into being as, as a boy. Okay? He says, all, everything in the world, all dharmas, the nature is without production. Meaning what? Yeah, that, I don't want to push too hard, too, too much. Okay? So basically he says, whatever you see, ultimately, their true nature is without production and without arisal. Okay, so how can, what does it mean? It means that, for example, the floor here you see in, in the Buddha Hall uh, was assembled by someone we hired. Okay, but the, because the prior floor is so bad, it's plastic. You know, fake wood, plastic, okay? And so, so look at that and say, no, that's uh, a, a Buddha hall cannot have fake stuff, okay? Does it feel good when you work on fake fixed stuff? So, we, so this floor here came into being, okay? Was produced by someone who got in there and they assemble each piece of plank of wood here. This is wood on top of the plastic things that you used to have, that awesome looking thing, okay? Yeah. And so, so this thing here was assembled, so it was produced, yes? Had production, was created. Production, in other words, production is created, okay? So this was created. How can you say that if this is one of the dharmas in the world, why is it without production, without arisal? Arisal has been produced, as it came into being. Yes? So why do you say this, how do you say this floor here in the Buddha Hall is without production, without arisal? Six. Because the floor already exists, just in a different form, in the form of particles, uh, there's no 
they're not born well produced. I'm sorry, repeat that. Because the flaw is already existing um, as a different form, such as particles, so they're not produced or born, they're already there. Wait a minute, the floor, I just told you, the floor, this wood floor here wasn't there before this wood floor that we have today. There was a plastic floor that looked like wood, but it's fake wood floor. So how can you say this wasn't, it has always been here before? It wasn't here before. Okay, they're not here before, uh, but the floor itself, um, it's not produced as, yeah, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you don't know. Okay, Wei Maung. Thank you, Master, uh, because it's empty. Because it's empty. Very good. If the nature, we're not talking about the floor here. This is what you need to be careful about. That's why, uh, that's why the translation here, uh, the original translation we, we, we use is incorrect. Uh, it should translate as a, the nature of dharmas is ultimately without production, without arisal. Can we change it, please? This is why it's confusing. It's because these people who translate it do not understand what it means. That's why you cannot fault them. This is, they try their best. And they, they simplify it because actually it should not, should not be translated like this. Okay? When you translate, you want to be as close to the original text as possible. So change it to... The nature. Oh. Is top production or arisal? Okay, thank you. Okay, we have some questions here. Uh, Wei Mountain comment. Th thank you, Master. Um, I appreciate Diego's uh, answer. I was thinking, I was understanding along the same lines. Um, without production, without arisal, uh, if something is produced or arises, that's like the first false thought that created the universe, right? That means it's false. So being without those things means that uh, Dharma is, by its nature, true. Am I on the right track? Come again? Uh, yeah, right. Um, Without production or with production, something that arises is false. Therefore, if the Dharma is without production and without arisal, it is true. No. Anyone else? Nice try. It had nothing to do with true at all. Go forest. Uh, Amit of all master. Mm. Uh, this one is, uh, I think, is exactly the same in the Heart Sutra. Thầy chư pháp không tướng bắc sanh bắc diệt. These all dhammas are empty, so uh, it's not produced or not ceased. Mm. Okay, very good. Exactly, is the Heart Sutra. Yes. It's correct. Uh, so, uh, in the Heart Sutra, this is the wisdom of the, the Avalokiteshvara, 
วันยินบริษัทพระอุสาคลียบุตร that all dharma s are not without production without destruction yes way mountain th- th- thank you master I-, i had a follow up question um is it like a chinese thing to define words by what they're not no no it's not something you understand it's not something that you're supposed to understand Okay, uh, the concept here is all dharma. You see, the nature, in essence, ultimately, you may see production here. You may see it being assembled, maybe come to being. Uh, but actually, ultimately, the key word is ultimately they are without production. Okay, so that that means that whatever you observe right now, you should not be attached to it because ultimately it's empty, without production. That's all. It's not meant for you to understand. You see, this is this people struggle with this, is because they try to understand. What do you mean not production? I just, I just, I just trick you into th- following my logic as being assembled piece by piece by piece by piece by piece by someone. So that's production. And then I turn around and say, actually, it's, it's, what do you mean by no production? He says, ultimately, what you see here, okay, ultimately, you know, is not real. Yes, three. Uh, Master, is this similar to when we meditate? We try to still our mind, um, not have any production um, or arisal of thoughts, and then exactly. Yes, way mountain. Thank, thank you, Master. Um, not to belabor the point, but when you say. Ultimately, it's empty. I'm not saying I understand emptiness. I know I don't understand emptiness, but when you say ultimately it means it's empty, it helps me understand the sentence a lot more. Yes, yeah. basically, don't try to understand. Don't be fooled. For example, your wife says, "I love you." That's production, isn't it? Don't be fooled by that. <laughs> Heidi likes this too much. <laughs> okay, so don't be fooled. Ultimately, it's all empty. Whatever you attach to so much, what is it? What happened to Kathik Daniel? He disappeared already. Wow, he drove up here just. Uh, wow, that's impressive. So anyway, the Catholics they seek love. Yes, love is production, isn't it? Love is arisal. What's the difference between production and arisal? The the Chinese teaching is so so profound. This is why, unless you, you read Chinese, you miss out on the meaning. The way they translated it originally is just like, like uh, truncated so much of the Buddha's the verses, meaning that it's actually a crime. If you ask me, okay? Yeah. But it, it's their best, so you can't fault them. Uh, What's the difference in production and arisal? It's simple English. Yes, six. Arisal has a movement in it. There's a jump. Something jumped out. It's a disturbance. And what about production? Production, it doesn't have that connotation. Okay. Even it sounds like a verb. Yes, you too. Thank you, 
Thank you, Master. We have a couple of YouTube questions. Right. And I'd like to offer my sincere gratitude to the uh, as many as 40 people joining us on YouTube this evening from wherever they are in the Saha world. Thank you. Uh, probably the one who are not here are on YouTube. <laughs> The one who used to be here last night, now on YouTube. That's all it means. The same faces. <laughs> Don't get too excited. <laughs> last night is 20. Tonight is 40. It's the same 20 who used to be here. <laughs> oh, just kidding. So last night they arose at DTT, and tonight they arise on YouTube? There you go. Exactly. Very good. <laughs> yes, commentary. Thank you, Master. Uh, first question uh, from San Francisco Daniel. San, Fran San Francisco Daniel asks, could it be that regardless if we are talking about a floor or any other dharma, no dharma contain our true nature because they are false and have no true suchness? Don't use big words you don't understand. Okay. Follow my lead. Yeah. They're not real. They're empty. That's all. And that's all you have to remember. Don't try to link with it to it, uh, too many things that, that no one understands what you're talking about, including yourself. Yes, next. Thank you, Master. Uh, second question. This is a new name uh, for my first time seeing it. Uh, Avirup Bhattacharya asks, if everything is zero, then who is speaking and who is listening? There's no one who's speaking and no one who's listening. Next. Oh, thank you, Master. Those are the two questions from YouTube right now. Okay, very good. Thank you. All right. So, well, the difference between production and arisal. Arisal is that it's there already. And it moves. Okay? It arises. Well, production is that it's not there. Let's see, that's a slight distinction. So, if you will, uh, in a way, uh, it's like you compare, like, uh, production is like birth. Arisal is movement. That's why there's, there's a, there's a, there, there are three Chinese characters, Wu Sheng, which is non-production, Qi is arisal. So that's why you want to translate both. There's a distinction here, okay? Meaning that whatever you see being born is not real. The floor being assembled is not real. Ultimately, it's empty. Don't be attached to it. Empty in Buddhism only means don't be attached to it. It's not the same emptiness that people talked about, Hinayana and, and uh, non-Buddhist things uh, who proclaim to be, have wisdom and so forth. Empty in Mahayana, I simplified for you. Don't be attached to it. And we're not talking about words, not talking about concepts, okay? If you look at it as empty, then what happens? You have zero attachment to it, all right? So far, so good? Meaning that if I ask you for your money, and you gladly give it over to me, because when you have wisdom, you will not hesitate. I will be the one who has no wisdom. Someone has to have no wisdom. <laughs> Let it be me. <laughs> you got that? Okay? So it's not about me. Don't say, how, how come, how come you, you, you tell us to, to look at it as empty, and you are not empty? I said, mind your own business. <laughs> I prefer not to be empty, but you should not be empty. <laughs> okay? You should be empty. I don't have to be empty. I'm different. 
So far, so good. You cannot compare me with you. <laughs> Someone must have the wisdom here to save the world. <laughs> okay, that's my job, to remind you that this floor is empty. Don't be attached to it. Okay? Everything, it's not just about this floor here. I'm, I'm speaking, I'm mentioning this floor here because, honestly, I spend a lot of money doing this. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I can't say it's, I'm not attached to it. <laughs> but I'm using it to tell you, you shouldn't be attached to it. <laughs> Let me be attached to it. <laughs> okay? Because I will suffer so that you don't have to. Because when you attach to it, you're suffering. That's my point. Okay, so if you have wisdom, then you have no suffering. Therefore, you don't, you see, is a, without production, is empty, a riso is that, even when it moves there, even if you can't even see it's empty, here's a difference. Empty is that, never mind about emptiness, because I see it's real, fine, okay? But even the fact that it's being assembled, it's called movement, yes? Or, when there's an earthquake here, or when someone walks here, the, 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 the floor bounces a little bit. There's a little bit of movement here. Or, or Professor Jane would say, there's vibrations. <laughs> okay? Scientifically speaking, that's arisal. Yes? Even with arisal, okay, that you observe, the changes, the movement you observe, is not real either. So there's two levels. If you don't see it's empty yet, no problem. Okay? You say, I don't know, it looks real to me. Okay? But then you should work on the next level, non arisal Okay? So it's a very clever way of teaching you. First, worry about non arisal and then graduate to Non-production. So far, so good? Mm. So that's why uh, ultimately, uh, whatever you see, okay, uh, all the dharmas, all the things you observe, including your own thoughts, your own inven invention, your own creation, your own conceptions, okay, they are basically empty and without arisal. Meaning, don't be attached to anything. Be free. Okay? And King Supreme Views enters this passage, uh, to enter this Dhamma door. Sheng hmm. Jian. Is he says, uh, Sheng is, uh, is, uh, is, uh, invincible winning view. So, this is the winning view. Okay. So, if you have the proper views, that would be it. What is, a, what is the winning view? Is it the supreme view, the ultimate view? is that the nature of all dharmas is ultimately without production or arisal. We're not talking about, again, the wood floor here. We're talking about the nature of the wood floor. Is it clear? So the wood floor itself has arisal. Yes? Well, it's nature. Its true nature, its real nature, is actually no production, no movement. So what we are attached to is a false floor here. Okay? 
because I cannot see the nature of this floor yet as being empty, therefore I'm attached to it. Is it clear? And you extrapolate this to every single dharma in the world. That's what it is. Ultimately, the nature of everything is empty. Including what? Boredom. Is boredom empty or not? Depression? Anyone? Hmm? It's empty. You can see that. What's depression? Who's depressed? Arisal is you. You say, whoop, I feel depressed. Yes? Even the nature of depression is empty. If you can see that, they can't touch you. Depression ghosts and demons cannot touch you. But, but because you can't see, that's why you still react to it. All right? Mm -hmm. So the supreme views, the winning views, uh, invincible views, is that everything is empty. No one can defeat you. There's no higher views in the world. Questions or comments? Two or four. For countless a oceans of aeons, he has cultivated skillful means that have purified lands everywhere in the ten directions. Wu Liang Jie Hai Xiao Fang Bian, Pu Jing Shi Fang Zhu Guo Du. Okay, 205. Uh, for countless aeons, this is uncountable measures of times. That's very long. Okay. Uh, and not only long time, but also oceans, which is basically uncountable mm. as well. So the analogy you like to, to put a lot of emphasis by using uncountable, uncountable. Okay? Just for emphasis. Mm -hmm. And what he did, he perfected like the Buddha, Shakyamuni Buddha, the, the Buddha that we know of in order for him to become Shakyamuni Buddha. He cultivated Three asamkiyayas, kalpas, uh, he cultivated blessings and wisdom. Uh, to for uh, asamkiyaya kalpas, it's, 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 it's even very, very long time, countless long times. Okay, and only count a long time, he says three. The, the precision is fascinating. He says three asamkiyaya kalpas. I'm always fascinated by the precision of the Buddha's teachings. Somehow he keeps track of something as some or kalpas. Okay, he can keep track of it. And he say, actually, I need three of those. I take three of those. Okay, so it's mind blowing, if you will, to me personally. I can't imagine what some or kalpa is, or even I can't think of any computer in the world who can have that kind of number. Okay, and then he multiplied by three, right? So he had to cultivate in order uh, for him to open, attain his ultimate wisdom, the Buddha's wisdom. He had to cultivate it, had to cultivate blessings and virtue. Blessings means giving, okay? Taking losses, that's how you create blessings. All right? All sorts of blessings. 
when you cultivate this long, it's like endless blessings, nothing they would not give. His wife, his children, his throne, hmm? his body, his country, right? That's the story of the Buddha right there. He kept on giving it away and giving it away and giving it away, okay? And that's practicing giving. And it takes losses, you know? meaning that if it's in order to benefit others, he will be willing to take a loss in order to help and benefit others. People think of giving as something glamorous. Actually, you take a loss. That's why the poor ones are the one who says, I give you $100 million with strings attached. Meaning, I didn't, I didn't quite give it to you yet. I still want to control it. Hmm? So, that is not quite giving yet. Okay? Yeah. So giving is just, you're gone. In particular, uh, case in point, uh, there are some people who come to the temple and help a lot, help DTT a lot. It was, you know, for us to get to this point, you know, look, at, look around you, it's a lot of work that went into it. Okay, wood floors, carpet, uh, altars to be, you know, TVs being hung, okay, and so forth. Sound system, video cameras, internet, you name it. Hmm? All of this is a lot of work that went into it. All right? And, and uh, so it's a big deal. So that some people he says, well, you know, we did a lot of work. Are you grateful to me? I said, no. You did nothing. The Dharma natures is ultimately <laughs> empty. How can I be grateful for something that's ultimately empty? Where have you been? This is the kind of temple we have. As soon as we, you make a donation, you donate, your, you give your money, your help, and everything else, guess what? We don't even remember who you are. What's your name again? <laughs> huh? Isn't it brutal? You work so hard to make, earn your money and so forth, and you give a big check to the temple. Master, can I, can I? Tony, this to you. Say, yes, 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 please. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And as soon as you cashed, what did you do for me recently? <laughs> huh? That's the kind of temple we are. That's why we're always poor. People know it by reputation. Master is totally ungrateful. Yes, three. Uh, Master, are blessings also something we should also be giving away? And if we are, should we be, should we have wisdom first before doing that? Why do you think we have a transference? At the end of every single cultivation that we do, we say, with all the blessings that are generated here, okay, the superior blessings generated here, we give it all away, all of it away. Uh, but Not what just about, to your children. What about everyone, even strangers? Even demons, you give it all the way. And then some smart Alex later said, you demon, you bad person, I will kill you. Stupid. Uh, what about blessings you've already earned? Is that included in the transference? Well, blessing you already have, what happens to them? Right. You want to give them to me? I thought you have no blessings. What are you talking about? What blessings are you talking about? You have blessings? I have no blessings whatsoever. Okay. Uh, 
Blessings are empty. Yes, we are supposed to accrue blessings, but the best way to accrue blessings is, is that look at them as empty. Don't be attached to it. Don't say, I help you so much, Master. Aren't you? I'm important to you. Yes? I say, no. Who are you again? <laughs> yeah? Okay. Yeah. So, yes, don't be attached. You Taiwanese are so attached to concrete things. I want to cultivate blessings. That's why I give to the, the temple. And that's why your blessing is so few. You do see blessing that must be generated when you give to the temple. As you still don't understand the, the process of harnessing blessings, generating blessings yet. When you generate blessings, the way the Buddha did is that he gave it away and he forgot about it immediately. And the people who still remember are the ones who are trying to get more out of you. Like me. Hmm? I'll put you right there, the seat, the important Dharma protectors of the temple. Each chair here is a hundred thousand dollars. You laughing. It's done. I remember Dalai Lama, like what's his name? The actor, uh, the Kung Fu guy, the, uh, not Bruce Lee, the other one, the American who's still alive, fat and tall. Aikido. You guys don't watch Kung Fu movies. <laughs> Why? I feel so lonely. Peter, do you know what I'm talking about? Steven Seagal. There you go. That's my kind of man. Steven Seagal. You know, he's like a fifth uh, degree black belt or Aikido or something like that. And, you know, he moves very fast. It's very, very impressive techniques. And, and uh, he, I, I understand that he and like Richard Gere used to pay for 100000 each for a chair so that he can sit close to the Dalai Lama when he spoke Dharma. Okay? So I said, wow, someday, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> I'm learning so much. <laughs> Why? We, we always do it the hard way. I don't get it. <laughs> but anyway, I'm working towards it, okay? <laughs> Uh, and so, so you cultivate blessings, okay? And the one thing I like to remind you, blessings are equivalent to wisdom. Wisdom is blessings. Blessings is wisdom. Wisdom, like Mr. Buffet, he has wisdom, so he makes money. Okay? Yeah. And blessings is that if you accrue blessings, okay, this is, a, this is one of the shortcuts in Mahayana, the Hinayana doesn't help. Mahayana, this is why the Taiwanese and so forth, they say, I want to plan blessing with, 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 the, with, the, with, the, with the Buddha, with the Mashi with Shenhua, the, with, the, with the Triple Jewel. And that's very, very wise. They plan blessing. It's just that they haven't perfected. They haven't learned the proper way of planting blessings with triple jewel yet. But the Taiwanese, the Chinese, so forth, and, and, and they understand that they want to plant blessings and blessings and blessings and blessings. Koreans too, I understand. Yes? You plant blessings. You don't talk. You just plant, plant blessings. Okay? Just give, 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 and support. But it is just that they're they're not the ultimate way of, of, of uh, practicing giving. And yes, way my own. Thank you, Master. You know, uh, R Richard Gere is pretty cool. 
you know, he could pay a hundred thousand, but the Steven Seagal got really weird. I'd charge him at least 200. <laughs> That's a long time ago. I think it's gone up in price like everything else. Hmm. But I'd be happy with a hundred thousand. I'm very humble. Okay. Baby steps. Yes, Wei Mang. Master, uh, today I read up, read up about Vajra Sutra. What you say is along the line with Vajra Sutra. The Buddha said, uh, how is that the Bodhisattva does not uh, receive blessing and virtue? It is because they're not greedily attached to such things. Therefore, it is Therefore, it is say that uh, Bodhisattva do not receive blessing and virtue. Is that along the same line? I think so, yeah. Okay, and so, so, so that's why, that's why the, the, the Taiwanese and the Chinese and the Koreans and so forth, they, their system is to blend blessings with Mahayana. And that's why they have tremendous potential. If you have blessings, then they can, you can blossom very quickly. You don't have enough blessings, it's very difficult. Okay? And so, uh, and then that's why blessings can unfold your wisdom quicker. Wisdoms can create even more blessings and so forth. Okay? Uh, so that's why the people who have true wisdom uh, can use uh, the skills to help the world, which in turn create more blessings for them, even more blessings for them. Right? So that's why they come hand in hand. You can't really separate them. Uh, 400 aeons, he perfected his hallmarks and characteristics. And uh, Buddha is somewhat vain. He, after he acquired West, Western wisdoms, and then he, he, he made sure he looked good. And this is something I don't understand. It's just like, it's just like it is said, I, uh, uh, it is said when you take a look at the Buddha, like even Shakyamuni Buddha, you look at him and you're like, oh my God, wow, this is perfection. Hmm? Your eyes are so pleased, uh, your ears are so happy, your nose is like so happy, and inside your heart is so elated. And that's the result of that 100 aeons of perfecting its hallmarks and characteristics. And that's why for us to see the Buddha requires immense blessings. All right. Hmm. Next, 206. He, that, okay, oh, I, I forgot also not another, another thing. Uh, I forgot to mention skillful means, okay? Uh, we didn't explain skillful means in a commentary um, slide. Uh, skillful means refers to the fact that in Buddhism, the bodhisattvas, who have higher level wisdoms, that's when they uh, can really begin to save living beings by learning, uh, developing a skill called expedience. Meaning that they make pretense, meaning that they lie. Okay? in order to help you. So there you go. There's a proof right there that I told you uh, in the past, I said, in order for you to become enlightened quickly, stick to the rules, stick to the principles, don't lie, for example. Okay? But that's only for those who have no wisdom. So it's the best way for you to acquire real wisdom is go 
along that freeway there, okay? Mahayana freeway there, mm. as delineated by the precepts. You do that, you're in very, very good shape. You can go full speed as fast as you can, as fast as you want, okay? Mm. But once you get there, then you use skill and means. Now you're no longer restricted by these rules that are designed for confused people. Until you're able to rise above your confusion, then you cannot practice skill and means. Even the people who become enlightened at the low stages, low levels, they still do not have enough clarity of mind or the wisdom is strong enough to use skill and means. The distinction is very, very, very precise here. You don't mess with it until you are wise enough. Then you'll be taught, you'll be trained into skill and means. And that's the advantage in Mahayana. We have certification. We say, oh, you reach a first ground. Means do not touch skill and means. You're too low. Yes, you have wisdom, meaning we can teach you a lot more than before, but it's still, you still don't get it yet. Yes, way mountain. Thank, thank you, Master. Um, just, just reading the slide and, and hearing how much time the Buddha spent uh, on on his hallmarks. I mean, just perspective wise, he just spent like countless eons. Yeah. So, so like a hundred eons is like you know, it's like thirty, ninety seconds on your way out the door. You look in the mirror. Make sure you don't have anything in your teeth, you know, just out of respect for the people you're going to be interacting with. Yeah. It seems like a short amount of time comparatively. Well, that's measure and not in terms of times, but in terms of concrete things that you do. For example, you've been helping the temple for, let's say, 10 years. How is it compared to a Samkhya Kalpas? Not even a blink. Not even not even a blink of the eye. And, and, and we're supposed to be impressed? I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so you see, it's fascinating because, uh, because you, you, see, you put things in perspective, you see how small we are, how petty we are, you know? We were so poor. That's why he said, but, but, but that's a lot. You know, I spend my lifetime having, having, giving this, earning this, and then you treat it like a, it's nothing. Okay? Because it's the scheme of things, and the big picture is really a grain of sand, a drop in a bucket. All right? Not even a drop in a bucket. Okay. He purified lands everywhere in the ten directions. Okay, mm. so uh, so he uh, he helps purify living beings' minds of greed, anger, stupidity. Okay, how does he purify beings uh, of the three poisons? By shedding light upon their confusion. By teaching about cause and effect. You know, do you realize when you steal, there's some consequences down the road that we will not like, that there's light of wisdom there, to shed the light of wisdom. Hmm? So unless it's pointed out to you, we keep on making the same mistakes over and over and over again until we order and our body is sick, and we can't handle it anymore, okay? 
and we continue the confusion and, and cycle through the will and your incarnation, create more and more suffering and confusion for ourselves. It's endless. And it's just like these habit energies. Well, you've been doing it for so long that it's natural to you, you don't think about it. Okay? So that's why um, you, well, the Buddhas and the Bodhisattvas have to come into the world and shed light upon our problems, our suffering, and help us wake up. People don't change unless they suffer. All right? Mm. So, Buddhas have no territorial uh, mindset. They purify lands everywhere in the universe, in the Dharma realm. If, why is that? Why? Because they have a chance. Buddha also must accord with conditions. If the conditions arise such that they're able to help us, they will. They will not hesitate. If it's not time yet, they patiently wait. Okay? So they don't say, I am Shakyamuni Buddha. I will only help save living beings here in the Saha world. No, not at all. You know, they go anywhere. Shakyamuni Buddha goes everywhere. Okay? Throughout the universe, they help living beings everywhere. No discrimination. No restrictions. So far, so good? Hmm. If that's the case, the purified lands everywhere already. And how come some Buddha lands are impure? Hmm? Actually, it should be translated. This is why the English translation is, is um, to me, it's unacceptable. This is not the Dharma that the Chinese is saying. Okay. Uh, for countless ocean or aeon, he has cultivated skillful beings uh, to universally purify the lands uh, of the ten directions. Could you change it, please? The, the verse here is really, really very poor translation. To purify, hmm. to say to have purified is after the fact. He's still purifying. All right. Yes, three. Master, can you not have a uh, pure without impure? What? Uh, it, it isn't the reason that um, impurities exist is because there's also purities. I don't understand the question. Could you, could you paraphrase uh, you were, for me, please? Sorry, you were, you were asking um, why are there impurities? And, and my response to that was that, uh, is it because there's also purities? And so there's the duality. Um, if you have evil, then you have good. Um, I'm not sure I get your point. The point here is, is um, my question is because, because of, uh, based on the English, I said to have purified. That's why I said, uh, uh, that's what now I look at the Chinese, uh, it hasn't purified yet. That's all. Hmm. He's trying to purify. 
everywhere. Okay, so the commentary here, why its Hamburg lands are impure, it, it is not relevant to this context. Okay, mm -hmm. so let's scratch that. 207, the Dharma realm abides in th thusness forever unmoving. The God's serene virtue awaken thus. Okay, 208. Uh, the Dharma realm means this universe abides in thusness, forever unmoving. Mm. So, uh, so even though we see all the worlds as reported by the, the, the giant telescopes, okay, that worlds are being destroyed and worlds, uh, galaxies are being come into being and galaxies are being destroyed and so forth, return to emptiness, okay? Uh, and uh, so the world is constantly evolving, moving, okay? And actually here it says, uh, actually the universe, okay, is actually forever unmoving and abides in thusness. Okay, uh, and so, um, so that's what the God, serene virtue, uh, awakening to this. Okay, so this serene virtue here refers to this God here that meditates a lot, uh, and and he opened his wisdom of that arises from this meditation. Okay. Uh, and he sees it as uh, unmoving, okay? Yeah. Meditation, he, he attained the state where, uh, where he has his virtue of thus, thus unmoving. Yes, YouTube. Thank you, Master. We have one YouTube comment and one YouTube question. Uh, first, the comment uh, and also an answer from Alex. Alex says, Impure lands exist because Buddha has compassion for all living beings in the six directions. Some of us don't have enough blessings to be in the pure lands yet. Okay, number two. Thank you, Master. Uh, another uh, new name in the YouTube channel tonight. Thank you for joining us. V. Chamedris asks, how can we recognize the mistakes we are doing in our lives, the ones we repeat over and over again? Repeat that, please. How can we recognize the mistakes we are doing in our lives, the ones we repeat over and over again? How do you recognize them? They are clearly described by something called moral precepts. When you study the precepts, the Buddhist, Buddhist precepts, uh, any infraction, any violation of those Buddhist precepts would be uh, inadvi ill-advised. Okay? If you see the violation, you can recognize it as as a mistake, as a sin, if you will. Okay, and they're very, very uh, clearly specified by the Buddha. And if you get, you want to go a little bit higher for left home people, they have even uh, higher or more precise types of infractions that uh, that uh, will bring us trouble. In fact. Mm, what's along the same spirit, what happens with the precepts, the five precepts for lay people, or the hundreds of precepts for left home people, uh, actually they are, they are the genius of the Buddha who look at us and say, you lay people have five huge areas of weaknesses. 
you like to steal? Stealing credit at work? Anyone? Hmm? We like to steal. Hmm? Uh, we don't hesitate to lie. Okay, so there are five groups of automatic behavior that we've been we've been doing lifetime after lifetime after lifetime. It's not just this lifetime. You know, once you steal, by the way, next lifetime you steal more and more and more and more. It's the nature of the infractions. The more you violate these things, the more you become adept at it. And you're very proud of it. Okay? You excel at it. And so, to me, I, I studied a little bit about the precept. I realized, oh, wow, this is, these are the inbred tendencies that we're born with and gets reinforced as we grow older. And so when, le- when you become a level person, it's even more fascinating because we get even more details, description of our tendencies for a woman versus a man. The Buddha is so precise. It's fascinating the kind of wisdom that he has when he says, when you're a person like me, you have these tendencies. When you're a person like uh, Xian Fa, she has different tendencies. Some are the same, some are a lot worse. Okay? Sang Wu, same thing. Doesn't matter who you are. Okay? So it's fascinating that we have these, these, these you know, we, we are, we, we, when we learn about, when I, I love, I love the, what I learn about the precept, I love the insights. And that's when he says, oh, wow, this is what I tend to do. And sure enough, uh, we do that constantly. Yes, Wei Mountain. Master, um, so for the translation here in the Chinese, uh, they use the two word, thus, thus, forever, unmoved. English translated as abide in the dustness forever and move. Uh, is there a distinction between the dust, dust and abide in dustness? There's the dust repeated two, two times. Either way is the same thing. It's a concept of dustness. Okay, so it's just uh, the Dharma realm is dust, dust. It's a Chinese, so they, they made it. And you know, they kind of uh, Americanize it, Englishize it, so that to make and call it abide in dustness. It's okay. It's not a big deal. It's all semantics. The, the, the context and the meaning is there, regardless. I have no problem with that. Okay? Uh, it doesn't detract from the meaning whether you embellish a little bit or not. And, and uh, for example, but then on the other hand, you say serene is, uh, to me, is a little bit, uh, a little bit uh, uh, loosey details. Jijing is still and quiet, virtue. Serene is American. It lacks the concept it's in, in the regional context of the name of this particular celestial king is that he excels in stillness and quietude. And there's wisdom 
there's a virtue associated with that. The virtue of being still and being quiet. Okay? Meaning that even though people come to him and excite him, he's still still as a virtue. When it's chaotic around him, he's still unmoved, quiet. His mind is unaffected. So to call it serene is okay, but I don't want to keep on beating up on them. All right, any other questions or comments? Again, you know, to say that the Dharma realm abides in thusness, uh, not ever moving, is basically it says, you know, it's empty. Everything is empty. That's all. Don't be attached. There's a different words, different ways of expressing it. That's all. So it's not meant for you to understand. Just hear of it and say, okay, one day when you get the level of the God, King, Serene Virtue, then you understand what it is. So you, you try this, how come, you know, huh? And you say, if you want to know it, get to his level. That's a message. Okay? Question from JC. The people who can understand it, that's a great news. We don't get it, it's okay. There's some others who can understand it. Hi, Master. My name is Hyo Kyung. I'm 20, 23 years old and I have a depression. Since January of this year, I participated in Fo Chi and Chan Chi. Since May, I start to live in JC. Now, I started with the fasting. This is my eighth days. Uh, there's not much really problem except uh, the area below my sternum is feel like it's stuck a little bit. But I'm wondering, should I continue to fast uh, past eight days? What's except for one? I couldn't quite hear it. Oh, uh, right below the sternum? Uh, sternum. Uh, you know, like the right beginning yes. of the stomach area? That part is feels a little bit uh, stuck, not, uh, yeah, it's like a stuck, like something is uh, sitting there. Right. But except that I don't have any problem. So okay. should I continue to fast past the eight days? Yeah, you can keep going. Don't worry about the sternum there, that, that, that knot right there. Uh, behind the sternum, don't worry about it. You continue fasting, we'll, we'll clear it up. Okay? That's all. It's a good thing. Don't worry. It's not quite a good thing, but uh, it will become a good thing. Just want to clarify. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Anyone else? If not, then we stop here. Oh, yes, one. Uh, thank you, Master. Uh, tomorrow, I have to go back to Korea 
tomorrow morning. So before I go, I'd like to express my big gratitude to the Master and Master Z and all the Sanghas and also my all Dharma friends here. Wow, you're going back already, huh? Yeah. <laughs> okay, back to work. Okay, yes. thank you for coming. Yeah, uh, good job. Yeah. Uh, it was, uh, um, I had uh, two things I wanted to do. First thing is I wanted to do the uh, nine-day fasting. I was so curious about it. Everybody's talking about the nine days fasting, and then it seems like, uh, yeah, that motivates me to you know what, what is going to be changing to me. This uh, this time uh, I did the nine day fasting. Actually, uh, this is the third time fasting in the U.S. And then the five days, seven days. This is the nine days fasting. And then this time it was a little different because I didn't have any dizziness or nothing like that in the first three days. But after that, I had uh, some lower back and then the waist uh, back pains a lot, but that's gone. And then maybe that's about through three or four days. It's pretty severe. But actually, my mom had some kind of pains before, so I know that it will be, anyways, recover. It will be, it will be okay, so that's why I can endure it. And after that, I have some skin itchiness comes along. And yeah, and then I, everything is done. And then I, I think in my, uh, yeah, my mind is also all. Yeah, I think in those my back pains, initial back pains are gone basically. So I feel a lot lighter. Then also, uh, this time it was a little weird that I you know. Usually I came here. Yeah, I have to uh, check my emails from the, my company usually, but maybe first or uh, for the first or two days, except that I didn't check any emails. I just forgot about everything. So, yeah, I didn't just do much about the uh, mobile phone thing at all. And then just, uh, you know, basically because of the fasting, I was lying down a lot too. But, uh, yeah, uh, sitting or listening to Master's uh, Sutra lecture and, uh, yeah, something like that. That's what happened. Mm-hmm. So that's why, you know, uh, so thank you for the uh, protecting me and then the caring from the master and then the, all the sanghas. Thank you very much. And then second thing I wanted to do is I w- really wanted to see the statues, actually. <laughs> but I the couldn't what? do statues. See the, the Buddha statues? Buddha statues, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> we send the photos when we uncover them. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, uh, we're hoping they'll be available, but we have some termite issues. Yeah, so but you know it's okay because I have a good reason to come back anyway. Yeah, and you have to come back. Yeah, and there you go. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, and then uh, the lastly, uh, I tried to um, watch the uh, Master Sutra lecture, which is the Heart Sutra. Because my mom always telling me that that's very good, and then I try to see it, watch it. But I know it's a starting from the kind of summertime, and the master's drinking such a good, some iced vegan beer. <laughs> Sometimes you said that, but some iced tea or something like that. And then because of my thirst, it just was killing me <laughs> to watch that. <laughs> thirst? <laughs> Such a lectures, <laughs> video clips. <laughs> Wow, interesting. <laughs> yeah, that was a hard time. <laughs> mm-hmm. So again, thank you very much for everything, for the uh, North Carolina, uh, North uh, California friends, and then the Master and the Master G. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Good job. Yeah, uh, it's, uh, oh, it's a lot of suffering. That you, when you fast, there's a lot of suffering you have to undergo. Look at her, how, how miserable Chuck Yon looks. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, and so I know it's, it's, uh, it's not as easy as it sounds. It's very difficult. And uh, I'm glad that you're able, many of you are able to complete uh, the program. Mm. So, 
It's fantastic because you see when she says that she had back pains and, and some issues and they cleared up, that means that uh, self-healing happened. It's wonderful. You have to learn to take care of yourself. I know that you know, when we go to work and we, we, we need to work hard and, and uh, to make money and earn our place at work. But in doing that, we also are causing a lot of damages to our body with our work. Therefore, I'm very happy that many of you who took the time to come and join us for the cheese. The cheese is, is, um, is uh, basically a lot of self-healing. You go through this process. Uh, so I'm glad you're all here and that you give us a chance to cultivate this Dharma door together. Okay? So, come again. Hmm. All right, good luck. Yes, sir. You're leaving too, I imagine, five. Yes, thank you, Master. Um, it's hard to follow after that, but I also want to say thank you to uh, Master and the Sanghas for um, hosting the events, uh, the, the cheese. Uh, we learned a lot, and um, uh, a couple of days ago, Master talked about um, you and the Sangha is really serious about bringing us theirs. I witnessed um, firsthand because Master Z pulled out his Spider-Man move <laughs> when he put up all the shade up there for us to um, uh, less light for us to uh, more um, more uh, concentration when we practice uh, meditation in the morning. So I I saw that and um, I just want to say thank you again for everything and all the people who support the event as well. Thank you. Yeah. Mm. Thank you all for your hard work. Oh. All right. Uh, anyone else? It's not easy. It's a lot of struggle for us, for all of us, but that's part of the process. We endure the hardship, we endure the suffering, and if you go through this, you get a lot out of it. And that's why uh, it's not just one time, but I see that many people who keep on coming and coming and coming, okay? Because it's real. I used to remember that, uh, that uh, this uh, talk, talk to you about the self-healing process. Actually, what happened is that when you come to the, the cheese, you actually are healing yourself big time, okay? And you rejuvenate yourself, and then you go back to your, your life, and then you, you, know, you go through the wear, put a lot of wear and tear on your body. Eventually, uh, eventually, you lose all the benefits here in the Chan Chi. That's why you want to keep on coming back and rejuvenate yourself, okay? Maintenance. And this is a sad thing about people in the world, and they don't take good care of themselves. You cannot ignore your health. It's a mistake, big mistake, okay? If your body is not healthy, your mind isn't. No, isn't not in not isn't your mind healthy, but also it's clouded. Your mind is not clear. Uh, so that's why please take care of your health. YouTube question. Thank you, Master. We have a YouTube question from San Francisco Daniel. San Francisco Daniel asks, Master. The things I said earlier about emptiness and suchness, I kind of felt it was a wrong answer and especially way to put it, but I said it so that you could really get that view out of my head. Is it okay for us to speak up even when we feel we are wrong so that we can discard those sort of lingering confusions? Sure, you, you, uh, you are entitled to express your opinion, uh, and uh, it's perfectly okay. Don't worry about it. 
And the same thing with me. I'm, I'm I express my opinion. It doesn't mean I'm right. And, and, uh, and feel free to correct me and disagree with me. It's, it's, uh, it's normal. We all are simply speaking Dharma to each other and we're learning from each other. That's all. I know a little bit more than you, but I'm also, when you speak up, I'm learning more about you as well. Okay? It's, it's, um, it's a two-way street. I give you what I know and you give me what you know. So don't worry about right and wrong so much. Uh, I will stop you if it becomes uh, you become a nuisance and you're trying to grandstand and, and uh, make a big deal for yourself, especially thinking you're so important. Well, then I will, uh, will, not, will limit the time <laughs> uh, because we're trying to learn. This is an opportunity for us to learn from each other, not for you to grandstand and and, uh, and uh, make a name for yourself and become more important in your own mind. All right? Okay, thank you, everyone. Uh, see you next time. <laughs>